largest crowd in Australia's rugby league history at the Sydney Cricket Ground for the clash between St George and South Sydney. They pack every vantage point while a colourful presentation adds to the exciting atmosphere. Norm Proven, captain coach of St George for the past four seasons, leads his team onto the field. Premiers for the past nine years, the Saints are hopeful of establishing a world record ten successive clearships. Their opponents, South Sydney, the famous Rabbitohs led by former rugby union international Jimmy Lyle. They're in the grand final for the first time in ten years. Excitement reaches fever pitch as the teams take their positions. Longbottom kicks off for Souths and the forwards move up as one man. Langlands runs the ball out and passes to Gaznia, who is quickly grounded by Coote and Moses. A tense, bruising forward battle is anticipated with the experienced Saints pack ready to meet the challenge of their younger rivals. Walsh, a dummy half, sends to Ryan, who comes through in characteristic style as the Dragons lay the foundations of their softening up process. Back Evans is stopped by his opposite number Jones and McCarthy who defends well in and around the rucks. St George crash their way through to just over the halfway line with fullback Langlands making ground. Smith beats Jones but is taken from behind by Sims and loses the ball. Covering their mistakes smartly the Dragons retain possession. Inside South 25 the forwards take over the attack. Rasmussen plays the ball to Walsh who sends Goulet away in a drive for the line. Through Goulet's play the ball breach, Souths receive a welcome penalty. Proven, the sole surviving member of the 56 team, is obviously disappointed at missing a great chance for an early breakthrough. Longbottom's punt finds touch outside the 25, and the scrum will pack down. South's ball. Jones on the blind side is held by the alert St. George defence, which excels around the scrum base. A penalty to the Rabbitohs. Eric Sims takes the kick from about 35 yards out. A President Cup player earlier in the season, Sims is playing only his fifth first-grade game. He doesn't get sufficient height, and Langlands clears the line with a ground-gaining run before being brought down by Coote and Anderson. Lumsden passes to Gaznia, on to Langlands, who... Longbottom gathers and takes play back to Saints territory with an enterprising burst. Undaunted by the big occasion, even though none of their players have ever contested a league grand final, Souths are playing confidently. The only team to have twice beaten St George during the year, they're dedicated to the task of taking Souths back to the top. Apart from Fred Anderson, Souths forwards average 23 years of age. Getting an even share of the ball, Souths occasionally try kicking over the heads of St George, but are too short to be effective. Langlands gathers and looks for an opening, but McCarthy takes him down. From every vantage point, some dangerous, the huge crowd is gripped by the battle in the centre. Clay loses the ball in a tackle by Moses. McCarthy, in good form, gains possession, plays back to O'Neill. On to Jones, and the backs are going well until Brannigan is tackled by King. Anderson to Morgan, but he's covered by Proven. From the play the ball, Saints are penalised, and here's another good chance for Souths to put first points on the board. Longbottom, who's kicked 34 goals during the season, takes the kick from just short of halfway. The first to score, and Souths lead 2-0. Containing 11 internationals in their 13, St George drive home every advantage. And the try is on the way. Quick passing from Raper to Gaznier to Smith, who goes over in the corner. Langlands fails with the attempted conversion, but the Dragons hold a point lead. 
Responding to their success, Saints reach South Territory again, but meet heavy forward defence. An indiscreet action in the play the ball is costly as Souths are penalised within goal kicking range. Second top scorer of the competition, Langlands guides the ball through the uprights. His 74th goal of the season. The slow motion camera vividly illustrates the force of the battle. Rapier taken down by O'Neill. Grand finals are won or lost in the forwards. And what a battle is being waged here. Langlands, ever anxious to join in the play, can't penetrate beyond Brannigan and Lyle. Swinging the ball back to the big men, St George lose possession, and O'Neill dives on the loose ball. Anderson gets his pass away before Rasmussen hammers through. Former Queenslander halfback Jones is elusive and comes back strongly after heavy tackles by opposing forwards. Attempting to force St George to turn around and chase the ball, Lyle kicks over their heads, but it's brilliantly taken by King, who prevents it going into touch. Unable to accelerate, he's grounded by Sims. Sattler steps through openings in St George Ruck with a powerful run. Anderson to Lyle, who kicks downfield again, but Raper with keen anticipation gathers, and South's tactics are foiled once more. Mike Cleary's father watches his other son, Dennis, in the Union Grand Final on a portable TV set, but still takes in every part of the league. From the scrum, Souths are penalised within comfortable kicking range. A great chance for the Dragons to increase their lead in a small scoring match. But Langlands misses, and it's still 5-2. St George strives to break through to set up a handy half-time lead. Penalty to Souths, and another big kick for Longbottom. This could be vital. And Souths close the gap. It's 5-4 at half-time, and anybody's game with prospect of a gripping, memorable 40 minutes to follow the interval. There's a gap in Souths' formation. Following on, he brings McCarthy down inside the 25. Anderson's pass from the dummy half position is knocked on by O'Neill, who's slow to take up his place in the ruck, and a scrum packs down inside South's 25. Won by South. Jones whips the ball to Lyle, on to Santa Moses, who knocks on, and St George gains possession. Hooker Walsh sends to Ryan, then on to Clay, and to Raper, who loses the ball. Langlands covers the error and drives forward until halted by O'Neill. Varying their plays, St George attempt to get the back line functioning, but Souths move up smartly in defence and Gaznia has nowhere to go. His elusiveness beats two defenders before he's brought to ground by Lyle, who's tackling like a tiger. Souths are penalised for striking before the ball hits the ground, and it's within kicking range for Langland. An expensive blemish by Souths. Referee Pierce signals the goal and St George leads 7-4 in the opening minutes of the second half. Launching dangerous forward attacks, Saints penetrate, with Walsh brought down inches from the line. Souths regain possession, but with play only a few feet from their line, Cleary kicks along the left flank. The ball finds touch just short of halfway, relieving the position. Winning the scrum, Saints try to open up play. Souths move up quickly to cut off the attack. Their harassing methods are effective causing handling errors and the alert Brannigan swoops on the ball. Sadler to O'Neill, who's grasped by Gaznia. From the play the ball, Jones sets the backs in motion. Lyle sends to Longbottom. On to Moses, who kicks over the heads of St George and finds the open spaces. Raper appears to have the ball covered, but Cleary is coming through fast. Raper is grounded behind his own line by Cleary, whose head strikes the turf heavily, and he's out. The Zambucks are needed to revive Cleary, who's playing in his first major rugby league grand final. He's up and walking, but only just.
Langland's line dropout is taken by Longbottom as Souths charge forward. Second rower McCarthy whips the ball out to Jones, who has Lyle in support. But there's no getting past Clay, whose bruising tackles frequently halt promising movements. Endeavouring to find gaps in the St George defence, Souths run the ball from one side of the field to the other. But the cover holds firm. Showing no sign of wilting, Souths maintain pressure, but are finding it impossible to break through the famous single-line defence tactics so skillfully used by the Premiers. At last, a chance for Souths as they receive a penalty just inside the halfway line. Longbottom, the finest long-distance kicker in league, takes the shot for goal. And it's there, a kick of almost 55 yards, and Souths are within a point of St George. Then another penalty from almost the same position. It's wide and a little short. Langlands gathers and spearheads an attack. Inside South Territory, Evans passes to Rasmussen. On to Ryan, who takes three men with him before cleverly slipping the ball to Gaznia. Coot brings him down with a copy book tackle. Gaznia, hampered in attempting to play the ball, is dragged forward. Souths are penalised. Another chance for Langland. Langland's third goal gives his team a three-point lead. Slow motion again shows the movement leading up to the goal. Ryan, acknowledged by many as the world's best front rower, is in devastating form. And Coote's tackle that stops Gaznier is one of the best of the day. Once more, the slow motion camera records the effectiveness of Ryan, a former rugby union international and heavyweight amateur boxing champion. Walsh sends Gourlay away as St. George takes play back into the forwards. The big Irishman is well stuffed by Jones. Opening up play from the ruck, Proven passes to Clay, who breaks clear. Then on to Smith, who races for the corner, pursued by Coote and Cleary. Coote's tackle saves what looks like a certain try. Losing possession for a brief period, the Dragons regain it through Cleary's knock-on, and Evans is almost over. In a tense struggle, possession changes rapidly. Sadler tries to burst through as South's forwards attempt to clear their line. Using jolting tackles, St. George try to shake the ball free. Longbottom chimes in, endeavouring to set up an overlap, but again Souths are unable to find a weakness in a rough-like defence. From the play of the ball, Anderson passes to Jones as Souths try to spread their attack. Moses makes ground only to meet the roving Clay and Raper, whose cover defence is faultless. Regaining possession, Saints launch a series of raids inside South 25. Evans flicks a reverse pass to Gaznier and the champion centre is almost there. A quick play the ball to Evans and on to Proven, who stretches his giant frame to its limits, but he's held out by inches. Duel to Ryan. But once more, South's defenders refuse to budge. Walsh to Rasmussen. Cutting out Smith with a long pass, he sends King in to score. The 22 years old King maintains a unique record of having scored a try in each of the six grand finals in which he's played. Langlands fails with his conversion attempt, but St. George have a handy six points advantage with only 11 minutes left for play. On the kickoff, the ball goes deep into St. George's territory. Raper fumbles, but Langlands gathers, making ground up the centre before being brought down by O'Neill. With time running out, Souths get a great opportunity with a penalty kick due to a ruck infringement by St. George. From about 35 yards out, right winger Sims, a 20-year-old newcomer to top grade league, takes a vital kick. A product of South Sydney's extensive junior football, Sims is composed under pressure. the centre, taking Souths to within four points of the lead. A converted try could give them the premiership. With tension mounting, tempers become frayed and there's some heavy play. 
from well inside their own territory, Souths are probing for a gap, and Brannigan appears to find it. But Smith's flying tackle brings him down. Dooley lashes out in his anxiety for possession, clipping Brannigan on the jaw. Brannigan, hampered by injury earlier in the season, has developed into one of the most promising centres in the game. His penetration and speed making him a potential match winner. Anderson wins the vital scrum, giving South perhaps their last chance to break through. They have a hard task, as the Dragons line has been crossed only once in the last six grand finals. Bringing the game to a fitting climax, the youthful challengers swing the ball about, but St George are equal to the occasion. South lose the ball, giving St George the chance of closing up the game. But the Rabbitohs aren't beaten yet. In a full-blooded effort, they tried desperately to turn the tide. But with victory only a minute away, St. George are in control. Their vast experience is a telling factor as they intelligently hold the ball and continue to make ground. Anticipating full time, the overflow crowd moves onto the field as St. George are within 20 yards of South's line. Referee Pierce signals the finish of play and St. George win 12-8, their second closest winning margin in 10 successive premierships. A world record for major football in any code. It's the most enthusiastic reception ever accorded a league team in Australia. Proven has to struggle through the excited spectators to receive the Premiership Shield on behalf of his side. South's captain, Jimmy Lyle, is widely acclaimed and Gaznia adds to his great prestige. Players exchange jerseys in traditional fashion. And already the question is being asked, can South go one better next season? Lord Mayor Jensen makes the presentation to Proven, who announces his retirement after a magnificent 16-year career. A great captain of one of Australia's greatest rugby league teams. 